What is up YouTube? Okay, I've got a nice and simple After Effects tutorial for you today. We're gonna to create this glowing halo ring effect that you can put around anything that you fancy. This is something that I was messing around with on a project for Adidas recently. And I actually think this technique ended up looking pretty cool. So I thought I'd share it with you. Let's do this. So this is the shot that we're gonna be breaking down. It's just a real simple example of this rotating halo effect. The challenge with this shoot was to make this insole, which is basically just a piece of plastic, look as cool as possible. And that's why I kind of designed this rotating graphic thing. We already had it in this cool plinth with this dry ice bubbling underneath and this awesome lighting with this kind of beam coming in from the side. But I just thought having this cool rotating halo thing would just be an extra level on top of that. So let's jump into After Effects and I'll show you how I made it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the noisy, glitchy outside ring. So to do that, we're gonna create a new solid. So right click, go new solid. Black is fine. And you, you want this to be the same size as your composition as well, which is in my case, this is Instagram. So it's 1080 by 1350, four by five aspect ratio. Click okay. And then we're gonna throw on a fractal noise. By default, it gives us this sort of smoky noise profile, which is fine for this. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make it evolve uh, and move around. So we're gonna go up here to evolution and then hit the little stopwatch. Press U to reveal all the keyframes. You can see we've made a keyframe here at zero seconds. Then we scrub all the way to the end of the composition. And then I'm just gonna type in 10 on the evolution. And that's gonna make this thing animate across the whole length of the composition. Right, now the next thing we need to do is we need to apply a mosaic effect. So I'm going to type in mosaic, drop that on the noise layer, and that's going to turn it into blocks like this. I actually don't want as many vertical blocks. I think I only want two. So I'm going to turn that down to two. Uh, horizontal, we can have a few more, maybe about 20. I think that looks good. And if we play that through now, got this kind of dancing barcode effect thing. Now what the mosaic does unfortunately is it smooths out all the colors and I want this to be way more contrasty. So I'm gonna really pump up the contrast in the fractal noise effect. You can see we're getting a bit more contrast coming into it now. Still doesn't look as contrasty as I want. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the effects. I'm gonna put on a levels effect as well. Drop the levels effect on there. And you can see we've only got pixel information right in the center of the spectrum. Um, so if I just drag in the left hand side here and drag in the right hand side, we're gonna end up with something which is nice and contrasty, which is what we need. I actually think this is animating just a little bit too quickly. So I'm gonna to go to this final keyframe. Instead of having that 10, I'm gonna make that five. So we've got a slightly slower animation there. It looks a little bit nicer. Right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this layer. So press Command D, make another version of it. And then we're gonna take this bottom layer, I'm gonna hit R and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Now what I want to do is I want to use the top layer to effectively chop out the bottom layer. And the way I'm going to do that is using a luma mat. And what a luma mat does is it sits in this column here. And if we go onto this bottom layer and we select luma mat black solid 18, it's going to use the layer above it to cut out anything that's dark and leave anything that's white. So let's click that. And you can see we've got this cool kind of fuzzy, glitchy noise pattern that started to evolve and it's left kind of holes where the darker patches were in the top layer, and that's exactly what we want. I actually think my squares are a little bit too big still, so I'm just gonna go into this, and I'm gonna turn that up to 40 blocks. Makes it even thinner. And on the top layer here, I'm gonna make that 40 as well. So that's looking cool. That's the kind of noise texture that we want. The only bit of this that we actually want to use is this kind of central slither because we need to wrap this round into a thin cylinder. So I'm going to go onto the rectangle tool up here and I'm going to select this bottom layer and then I'm just going to draw a mask like this over that central slither. And that's just going to chop out this central portion for me and that's the only bit that I want. So we've got our glitchy noise texture, that's looking good. Now, I'm going to select these two black solids and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go pre-compose. I'm going to call that glitch underscore noise, click OK, and then we've got that stuck into a new composition. Now let's colorize this so it matches the background a bit better. So I'm going to go over to the effects, I'm going to type in tint, drop that onto the layer. Let's make the black somewhere kind of dark purple, uh, something like that. And let's make the white bright pink. 
That seems to match the environment a little bit better. The next thing I'm going to do as well, I might even just change the mode to add. So it kind of blends the background in with it. Now let's start to wrap this round in a circle then. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use an effect called CC Cylinder. So I'm going to drop that on this. And you can see straight away it's kind of done something with it. What it's actually done is it's taken the left edge and the right edge and it's joined them together into a cool cylinder. So if I go up to the CC Cylinder effect here, you can see I can play around with the radius. Can stretch it like that. But if I go into rotation, I can rotate it. And you can see now we've got this cool cylinder thing. And straight away, even just like that, it does look pretty cool. So I can just add a couple of bits of rotation to the X and to the Z like that. But the problem is that this is not moving with the insole. Uh, the, the, the shot that we used was handheld. So there's a little bit of wobble in that. And our cylinder that we've created is not wobbling at all which is not good. It doesn't look as real as it could do. So let's do something about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to go new null object and I'm going to rename this null track null. And then I'm going to go into our base footage. I'm going to hit tracker down here. I'm going to go track motion. You can see we're going to make a new track point. We're just going to track the base of the insole here on this like glob of glue that we put there. Uh, transform and our target is going to be the track null that we've just created. And we're going to hit play and that's going to track through. And the tracker should just be automatically picking out where that glob of glue is throughout every single frame of this shot. So now that track's done, I'm going to hit apply. Apply dimensions X and Y. Yeah, okay. And now my track null should be moving around with that point there. So what we need to do now is we just need to attach our glitch noise thing to the track null. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to go over here to the parent and link column. And then we're going to select track null like that. And now our glitch noise should be moving around. And it already looks like it's stuck in the right place. Let's just change the rotation and the position a little bit. I'm going to bring it down in the Y axis. So it looks like it's more centered around the rod. Let's just change the rotations a little bit. I also think that this ring is a little bit too fat and that's because we've got kind of two pixels worth of information in it. So we're just going to jump into this noise texture. I'm going to go to this bottom layer. I'm just going to add some more horizontal blocks. There we go. Now we're going to have slightly more detail and I'm just going to make this mask a little bit smaller as well. So the whole thing is just going to get a little bit thinner. And that is pretty much the effect that I wanted to create. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that the glitchy ring is actually sitting in front of the rod at the back here, where it should probably be kind of blocked out by it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little mask to knock back that back edge so it feels like it's sitting behind the rod. So I'm going to do that by using another shape layer. I'm just going to draw a little box like this on a new shape layer. And then you're going to put that exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm also going to attach this shape layer to the null. So I'm going to go parent and link function, track null. And now my shape layer is going to move around with the null. This is not perfect, but it's a pretty good job. And then I'm going to use that shape layer to chop out the layer beneath it. So if I'm going to go into the glitch noise thing and I go track mat, and I'm going to go alpha inverted mat. So it's using this shape layer as an alpha mat. It's basically chopping out this shape from the layer beneath it. And that just means that we block out this rod here and it feels like the ring is actually going behind it, which is what we want. So let's play that through. That's looking pretty good to me. What we might want to do on this shape layer is we might just want to add a blur effect. So go into here. We're going to go Gaussian blur. We're just going to add like five pixels of blur. And that's just going to soften the edges up just a tiny bit. So it makes this mask a little bit smoother and it doesn't look quite so harsh on the edge there. Now, one thing that I want to do to make this a little bit more interesting is I want this to wobble a little bit as it rotates. So I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to jump into the CC cylinder effect. And on my Z axis here, this is just going to create a little bit of wobble as it rotates around. So I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch for the Z or option click if you're on a PC. And I'm going to type in wiggle uh, one and 10. What we've done is we've written a little expression which says you're going to wiggle this value uh, and inside the brackets the first number here is the number of times you're going to do this wiggle per second. So we're going to wiggle this once per second and then this number, the second part of the bracket is the amount 
of degrees that you're going to perform this wiggle. So basically what we're saying here is every second wiggle by 10 degrees. So it's just going to give you this kind of random wiggle, which looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more interesting. So let's play that through. You can see now it's wobbling up and down ever so gently. It just feels a bit more organic and a little bit more natural. That looks pretty good to me. Right, so let's do the next step of this, which is the text. So I'm going to go up here, text, and I'm going to just type in prove it with GMR. And this is the sort of strap line that comes with this product. I'm just going to duplicate that, type it again. Now, I need to center this in the composition. So I'm going to go align, line to composition and center as well. And then we're going to go character and I'm just going to make it the right size for the composition. So that's about right there. Just we, again, we want the edges to line up. So when they get wrapped around, they're neatly going to match up. The P is going to match up with the R up here. And let's change the text color to white as well. All right, so that is our text done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do pretty much exactly the same process. We're going to add CC cylinder. I'm going to drop that on the text here. See, it wraps it around in a cool way. I'm just going to put this underneath the glitch noise. And what we basically want is we want the parameters of the cylinder effect to be exactly the same as this ring that we've already created. So if we move the ring or we change anything with that, it would also make this change in exactly the same way. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to link all the properties together. So I'm going to open up the, let's just make a little bit more space on screen. I'm going to open up the CC cylinder effect here. And I'm going to open up the CC cylinder effect here. And I'm going to say position X, Y, and Z. I'm going to drag this thing, which is the pick whip here, and I'm just going to say link position X for the text to position X for the glitchy ring. Same thing with position Y. Same thing with position Z. And then the same thing for rotation. We're just going to link all of these positions together. So position rotation X, rotation Y, and rotation Z. Link them all together. What that means, if I make any changes to this top layer, so if I decide it needs to come up or it needs to go down a little bit, it's going to take the text with it. It makes our life so much easier because it means we don't have to update all these things, they're just going to update together, which is awesome. The other thing we need to remember to do with this new text set that we created is we just need to parent it to the track null as well. So it also moves around as the shoe moves a little bit too. Now, I think my text is looking a little bit too big here and it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to go into the character menu. I'm just going to bring down the text size so it's more like 50, but you can see now the edges don't line up. So I'm just going to add a bit more spacing in the text as well. And what I want is I want this to be a little bit smaller than the ring. So I'm going to go into the radius here. I'm just going to drop that down to about, uh, yeah, 65%. And I also want my prove it with gamer to be rotating. So let's just jump into the rotation controls. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this thing that I've just linked to the noise layer. I'm going to actually turn that off. I'm going to unlink it. So I'm going to press alt click again. And now I have the ability to rotate it around the Y axis independently of the layer above it. So that's cool. So let's just start at zero at the beginning and maybe we'll add 180 degrees of rotation by the end. So it goes up to 180. I think that's actually spinning the wrong way. Let's go minus 180. I also think my wiggle is a little bit too much and it makes the text quite hard to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into this glitch noise layer and the wiggle that I've created on the Z axis here, instead of being 10 degrees each second, I'm just going to make it five degrees each second. So it's just going to wiggle a little bit less now. That's looking good to me. So the final thing I need to do is I need to go into, I need to create another duplicate of this shape layer. So press command D and I'm going to put that as an alpha mat above the, let's just turn it on. So we just want to block out that back layer of text, just really subtly like there. So I'm just going to drop that on as an alpha mat here. I make the text use the shape layer as an alpha mat, or actually an alpha inverted mat, like that. And now when we play that through, it should chop out everything that's behind. Indeed it does. So that's pretty much it for the basic effects. And the cool thing is, like I say, you can go back into this glitch noise layer and you can add a bit more rotation on the X axis like that. If you want the thing to be a little bit steeper. And the other cool thing about the CC cylinder effect is it has this uh, light and shading functionality as well. So you can see it's giving me a bit of light here and a bit of shadow here, and you can sort of match your lighting with that. So if I change my light direction to 
come from over here, you can see that the lighting on the letters is changing as well. So realistically, our light is coming from the right. So let's push this over to the right. Let's make the light a little bit higher. So it seems to match our real light. We'll also change the color, make it a little bit warmer as well. Nice. So that's a pretty nice way of making your text really like match up with your scene. Cool. So I've just done a few other little things just to finish this off. The first thing that I did is I made another outer ring that's just got a slightly larger radius. So that's up here, glitch noise three, 120%. And if you just jump into this texture, I basically just did exactly the same thing, but I just played around with the levels adjustment on this top layer here. And that basically dictates how much of this gets cut out. We'll slide the histogram, the left-hand edge of the histogram. I can basically just chop out more and more and more of the image. And if I pull it all the way up here, I end up with just a couple of little specks of light every now and then. So you can see when I jump back out into the main comp, so you can see when I play it through, we just get these like kind of occasional bits of extra noise a little bit further out, a slightly larger radius. And I think that looks kind of cool just to give it extra layers, extra rings, like rings of satin or whatever. And then the final thing I did is pretty much exactly the same thing again. Uh, I just duplicated the text layer. So this one down the bottom here, I turn this into edges. And the way that you do that is over here in the color and the fill option, you can just press like that and it just flips it from being solid fill or just to being a uh, stroke or an outline. And then I made the radius of this just ever so slightly less than the radius of the text itself. So the text I think is 65, the radius of this is 62. So you've got this kind of thin outline layer sitting underneath the text. And I just think that makes it look a little bit more interesting and there's a little bit more going on. So let's just zoom out and watch the whole thing again. So that's it for this effect. Um, it's kind of simple, it's pretty fun. I think you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. I've actually done a couple of other little posts using this exact same effect. There was this one I did, uh, which was an animated voice note, and I've done a whole tutorial on how to do that. Working on making a massive lasagna. Working on making a massive lasagna. And then the other one I did is this kind of Instagram zoetrope thing where I span the animations around, had them kind of coming out of the camera. Um, and that's all just using the CC cylinder effect and pretty much the same techniques that we talked about here. And that is it. I hope this tutorial was useful. If you've got any questions, please do leave me a comment. I'll do my best to respond. If not, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.